вот уже треть жителей США в возрасте от 18 до 24 лет верят, что Земля плоская. А почти 15% американцев в возрасте за 30 с ними согласны. Никому не нравится чувство, что мы находимся на маленьком шарике, который несется сквозь Вселенную. Да, закроют программы с астрофизическим и космическим уклоном. Оставшиеся естественные науки, как биология, геология, океанология, археология и другие, должны быть полностью обновлены. still round. I'm here to tell you it's not. It's flat. <laughs> he has a he's an interesting guy, man, and uh, you know he believes it so. Kyrie, the Earth is flat, right? Yeah. 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 So whatever. Yeah, Earth is flat. That's news. That's news. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Broadcasting straight to you from a large spaceship, currently promoting Flat Earth social events in all cities. It appears that the faithful are everywhere and just don't know it yet. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Strange World, where the truth is often stranger than fiction. I'm your host, Mark Sargent, the creator of Flat Earth Clues, which propose that all of us are living inside a Truman Show enclosed structure thousands of miles wide. Check it out at MarkSargent.com and close world.com or just google flat earth clues if you can't find it you're paying too much attention to the latest spacex challenge for those of you listening to this on youtube and want to hear the show live as it happens please go to truth frequency radio for the latest schedule currently the show is on tuesday nights at 7 pacific 10 eastern And before I get to anything, the quote of the day, which I think I just got rid of. So, Peanut Gallery, send me the quote of the day again. (laughs) I pasted something over the top of it. Sorry, man. That's that's sad on my part. A couple things real quick. Uh, The Jeffrey Grupp challenge is still in effect. So, anybody wants to debate Jeffrey Grupp uh, from a scientific standpoint or even if you're a debunker, uh, please let me know. You can email me at msergeant23 at comcast.net or call in 720-897-6111 and leave a message and I will set you up. Uh, of course, I would love to debate you as well, but I promised the first debate to Jeffrey Grupp. Uh, the quote of the day from the peanut gallery, the history of our race and each individual's experience are sown thick with evidence that a truth is not hard to kill 
and that a lie told well is immortal. That's a great quote. That's from Mark Twain, a uh, famous American humorist. A lie told well is immortal. That's brilliant. I love that one. Uh, just so you guys know, uh, in addition to reading some emails and taking calls tonight on 720-897-6111, uh, my, my, we're not taking the calls quite yet, so settle down. Hang on one second, guys. Uh, we're <laughs> the, uh, the chat room is, is open and we will be monitoring chat. And you're probably saying, how are, Mark, Mark, how are you monitoring chat? Well, it's not me. It's my careless yet lovable secretary who is going to be in chat taking a look at things and nudging me when uh, it gets interesting. So by all means, guys, and keep it civil in there when you get a chance. So say hi, secretary. Hello, everyone. There you go. See? Thanks for having me. Who knows what goes on in there? Yeah, I, I've actually, believe it or not, guys, I have because it's only been me most of the time, I don't actually look in chat. So you guys have been duking it out for weeks and weeks. And Peanut Gallery says, where's the chat? Well, it's at True Frequency Radio, of course. Go to True Frequency Radio and, and enter the chat room. And I don't remember where exactly the button is for it, but it shouldn't be too hard to find. Uh, other things before we get into the phone calls and everything else. the um, For those people that were in Canada... Some of you know that I went to a Flat Earth social event in Souk, which is on Vancouver Island. And that turned out really, really well, guys. I just fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, Dante and everyone that was involved on that side and the people that went. The guy came in from Vancouver, which was fantastic. I actually caught a bus from the ferry to get to Souk. And it is so encouraging for me to see because I got to tell you, if – we can get that sort of turnout and that sort of enthusiasm in Souk, Canada. I'm pretty sure we can do Flat Earth just about anywhere. So, which is why I opened the show with the way I did. I'm encouraging anyone. Look, any, you guys want to do social events even before the mixers that are going to happen, you know, in the spring. And those are official, of course. But anyone wants to do their own, you will get a turnout. I guarantee it. There's there's a lot of Flat Earth. I've, uh, I've said this for a while now, and that is, you know, there's a lot of Flat Earthers in the closet and they will attend these things. We're thinking of doing uh, another one here in Victoria. Uh, my lovely secretary is thinking of setting that up. And be, even before the Earth Day Mixer, which is going to be in Seattle, which, of course, we have no details for that yet. So, it, But seriously, you guys want, want to do one in the middle of Oklahoma or California or New York, just put uh, – put a. I'll, I will advertise it for you on my channel. If you, if you have an event – if you think you're going to do one, let me know. I will put a, make a little video for it with a little song and put it out there. And I guarantee people will show up and you guys will have a great time. So uh, please, I, I am encouraging people to do just little flat earth events. It felt I, – I hate to say this because it sounds kind of weird. It kind of felt like an AA meeting. You know, even though I've never officially been to an AA meeting, uh, you know, is people sitting around because a lot of flat Earth individuals have a hard time. I call them individuals because they have a hard time finding other like-minded people, and it was great. It was just a wonderful energy, and I thank everyone for being involved. So, moving on, uh, a couple other things. I wanted to read a quick email before I read any other emails. And that is uh, from someone who has created a new Flat Earth Facebook page. I want to read the email real fast. I'll give you his email address at the end. Hi, Mark. First up, I'm a big fan and I love your work. Second up, I need your help. A friend of mine has started a Facebook page for us true flatties. And I'm wondering if you would like to join and help make it popular among genuine flatties. Here is the link address. It's called Amazing Flat Earth, in parentheses, shill free. I hope you get this and thanks. And then he links the, the Facebook thing. Uh, so you can look at, look that up on Facebook, Amazing Flat Earth Shill Free. And if you want to email him directly and figure out how you can get more involved, you can email him at Guy McPhee85. That's G-U-Y-M-C-P-H-E-E 85 at gmail.com. And before we do anything else, I just wanted to mention, now I'll mention this in, in Flat Earth News as well. Uh, but this kind of uh, is tied to the Souk event. Uh, big shout out, big ups to the women of Flat Earth. Not just uh, the, the women that attended the Souk event. And there were. It was probably, I would say, at least half, half women, half men, at least, at, at that event. Uh, and not only to my wonderful Flat Earth girlfriend, but uh, also two other great videos which came out this week. One was from Sunny Peaches 
who did a video called Love Letter to NASA where she was basically doing a breakup video like she was doing it to a boyfriend but completely tailored it to NASA and science. Brilliant. Just knocked it out of the park. And the YouTube channel Daphne Ramel, D-A-P-H-N-E-R-I-M-M-E-L, her now 14-part series called her The Personal Flat Earth Journey. It's just wonderful. Again, language isn't the best in the world, but hey, you know, she's hard-nosed. I think she's a nurse, so and I, I don't know any nurse that doesn't swear. Not necessarily like longshoremen, but that's a whole other story for another time. So thank you, you, you two, for I, – I didn't want to miss you in Flat Earth News. I wanted to get, get out up front, so thank you for that. Uh, phone number to call in is 720-897-6111. That phone number is 720-897-6111. And while we are waiting for the phone calls to come in, and here's the phone call. Let's see. Oh, nope. And they hung up. Whoever it was, 801 area code, call back. I wasn't trying to scare you away. You can call in now. I'm sorry. Uh, there was an email that came in from a guy named Guy. He goes, I need help showing why this article is wrong. Can you go through the 10? Uh, now 215 is calling it. Let's figure out where 215 is from. You are on live with Strange World. Where are you calling from? What are we talking about? Hey, it's Sean from Boston. Uh, you know, uh, first caller every week now for the last uh, two. Now I'm on two for two. Nice. <laughs> Excellent. You got a streak going. Uh, I'm trying, man. I might be uh, first caller every night uh, for the next, you know, who knows? Awesome. Awesome. What's uh, What's on your mind? So I had, uh, you know, a couple things I wanted to talk about. Uh, for one, um, there was a lot of women who marched, you know, this uh, past, uh, you know, few couple days. Yeah. Uh, it, I was, uh, I, 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 uh, I, I was in Boston, so I'm from Boston, and uh, it was pretty freaking crazy. There was a lot of women. I, I, I got this one video. It's hilarious. Okay. I took this whole like panorama video, right, and uh, and I come to the end of my video, right? And this lady in the crowd goes, hey, tree guy, tell everyone to go that way. I'm like, <laughs> no. <laughs> like, what, 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 what am I going to do? You know, like, what, I'm going to tell everyone, to, you know, like, go that way? You know, like, no, I don't think so. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, I had a couple things I wanted to talk about. I, uh, I just also wanted to say thanks for, uh, you know, all you're doing. Thanks. Uh, I uh, also wanted to apologize for how fast I talked and how much shit I talked about last week. I know I put a lot on the table, and uh, you know it wasn't a lot of back and forth, really. So that, that's okay. That don't part. don't worry about it, man. It's okay. <laughs> don't don't sweat it you at know. all. Are you kidding? Everyone's energy levels are different, and yours I happens know. to be people. People actually prefer it if you talk fast rather than talking really slowly. So yeah, talk, and, as, and, talk and, as fast and, as you and want. And you know what? It was a good offset for Alabama to be right after me last week. <laughs> no, no, no. no, no. Don't, uh, don't pick on Alabama. No, no, no. I love him. I, I He calls every week, and I love him. I love all the callers. You know, you guys are great. You help me get through the week. It's fucking fantastic. Good. Sorry Excellent. to swear. All right, so what do you, what do you but, got? Uh, you me. know, I, 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 all right, so here's my, here's my thing. But, okay, so, like, you know, the sun's up there, so maybe it's 3D – that we could like get above it maybe. maybe maybe it's in the firmament and we can't get above it but like can we just shoot a rocket at either that or the moon or something like like you know what i mean like that that can we just get above it i'm sure it, you know nasa knows what the fuck's going on i'm sure they have fucking full flat earth pictures you know that what i mean like that is an interesting point because if anyone wants to go out there and take a look at this because this is a brand new story on cnn january 24th uh, on in the their section CNN Tech, it's called "Meet the Five Finalists in the Google X Prize Moonshot." So I got to read really? this. I got to read this paragraph. I just found this today. The Go Google no, no. Go Lunar X Prize competition is down to five finalists who are prepped to go after a landmark achievement in 2017, the first ever privately funded trip. Now it's non manned, of course, to the moon. Right. And what they're doing is they're offering a twenty million prize, twenty million dollar prize, American, to any company that can land a probe on the moon and beam back HD pictures. And there are five companies that are actually, th- but the, here's the thing: it's got to launch in 2017. Has to well, launch. Well, in but 20- how, how, 
So what are they going to do? The same thing as the sixties, or like I you don't know. know. Uh, you just did you see the movie uh, Operation Avalanche just now? No, I didn't. But I, I'm, I'm, I'll oh, probably. Oh, it's, it's very telling. Very good movie. I, I, I know John, your late caller, who you love from yeah. New York. Yeah. Uh, he he calls later in the show. Uh, he lo- he liked that movie. I thought he said uh, it, it's a good movie. You should check it out. It's very telling. It, it, it's just like the CIA guy is like, oh, you know what? Let's just fucking fake it, and then yeah. they're just like, yeah, let's go with it. Yeah, fucking, yeah, it's yeah. pretty good. But anyway, uh, any, anyone wants, wants to go out there, seriously, check out that article on on CNN. Meet the five finalists. No, but that, wait though, I have one simple question though. Do you think we could get above the sun? Do you think it's three D underneath the firmament, or do you I, think it's like uh, I don't uh, I don't uh, think we can get above it. I don't think. Well, civilians definitely can't do it. So, and the, the only reason I mentioned I, the, only, the only reason in, I mentioned the moon. I'm thing talking about is, physics. The what? I'm just talking about physics. Do you think we can get above the moon and No, the, I don't. The sun? I don't. I, I think You think I there think are reflections and there are actual projections in the firmament or something like that then? I th- no, I still think they're th- either three D or two D, but I'm I'm kind of almost leaning now. Well, you know what? I, I'm not gonna you know, I, I take that back. Because how sweet would that picture be though? It would be an excellent Earth, picture. You get to see the sun below and you get even just partial flat earth. You just get to see a couple continents. Yeah. And the, the fucking sun below below the you know, that'd be something. Yeah. That would be something. Hey, but by by the way, real quick, because I want to rattle these off real fast. This is the the five companies in Go question? In case, in case anybody doesn't want to read the article, uh, Space I L, and that's out of Israel. Uh, they're they're in the finals. Moon Express out of Silicon Valley, California. Synergy Moon, that's multinational. Tim Team Indus out of New Delhi, India. And uh, Hakuto out of Tokyo, Japan. And, but yeah, none of these. But by, by the way, yeah, none of these guys are going to do anything. No one is going to go there and beam back. But it's it's. I will say this: it's ambitious for them to say that the launch has to start uh, before the end of the year in 2017. So we'll see. But they anyways, far as the sun, and I mentioned this because if the moon is the same altitude as the sun, that kind of answers your question, right? Because you know these these guys, whoever's in the finals, I imagine all these five are going to meet with horrible disaster. You know, none of these things are yeah. going anywhere. Of course, you can't. You can't. No one's going to be a lot be allowed to to be. It's weird that they would even try to do these contests anymore. You know, it's, yeah. it's kind of a moot point. Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's, it's ridiculous. It's sad. The what? But uh, hey, thanks for letting me rant my shit, and uh, I love all you guys. You keep it up and oh, keep no telling the truth. All right, and uh, you know. I uh, just keep keep you know it just research the Tower of Babel shit that that stuff is wonderful. You yeah, know, I agree. Really t- just re look at the Bible again. You know, I grew up atheist. You know, re- just re look at it. Just I agree. Flat Earth, it's just fun. Yeah. But uh, all right, have a good night. All right, Matt. And, see ya. Uh, I love you all. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. Eight oh one area code. Where are you calling from, and what are we talking about? Am I live? You are live. You are live on Strange World right now. Who is this? Oh, I am Gleb. I'm from Utah. Utah. And yeah. Fantastic. Don't don't be nervous. By the way, if this is your first time. Oh yeah, it is my first time calling anything. I'm 18. It's oh fun. wow. All right. Well, what's uh? Are, are you are you kind of into the topic? Did you just happen to watch yeah. a video? Oh, I've watched many videos, and I have yet to find another flat earther. Oh, I know it's tough. Well, maybe there's Everyone's not that many in Utah. Yeah, everyone's calling me crazy. I have had a debate at work that I like had a debate on Facebook with videos. Oh, nervous. That's with okay. Videos, uh, and then yeah, that's all right. It's no worries, man. I mean, you know, uh, here, here. Okay, here's a, here's what I'll do. Uh, yeah. Anyone that wants to do something in Utah, if you guys want to do a Utah event. Are you near? Are you near Salt Lake, or are you out in the middle of nowhere? I'm near Salt Lake. I am only like thirty minutes away. Oh, perfect. If anyone wants to do something, you know, I recommend Salt Lake because, you know, it's the biggest place there. Yeah. And, uh, I, you know, let me know the details and I will make a quick promo video and put it on my channel. And then uh, this caller here can... Oh, that would be amazing. That yeah, so I think good. it'd be really cool. Yeah. I guarantee there's, there's, there's flat earthers everywhere. In fact, I know. Uh, it's just the, so the event I, I was at recently, they were kind of talking about how we come up with identifiers and uh, a nice... A uh, woman said that a pin, little pin, would be a great idea. Ooh, a pin. Yeah, or some something on the back of your car. Obviously, not a rainbow stripe, I don't but have you know, a car. you never know. 
So uh, well, anything was, on anything on your mind now that you got you made it through and you're kind of getting through that nervous part? Yeah. What? So, uh, any? any I, you're just kind of saying, hey, they should looking for more flatter I'm, people in Utah. That too, but I was calling about. Okay, so I watched this show called Magicians, and I really love it. Okay. But what really struck me is when they eventually get the fillery. If anyone that's watching, you know what I'm talking about. Okay. It's a dimension past Earth. And they flash a picture of an abstract flat earth without the ring. Yep. Uh, uh, so I'm like, huh, people are slowly starting to talk about it without talking about it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Writers, you got to remember a lot of writers out in Hollywood and, and other countries, but uh, especially Hollywood, they will scour mainstream and alternative news looking for anything interesting. And flat yeah. earth is the most interesting thing out there right now. No question. Still there? Yeah, if you can do something in terms of Utah. Well, you, okay, well let me let me ask you this real quick. Not not okay, to turn yeah. this into a flat earth meetup thing. Would you mind yeah, sure. uh do you do you want to put your email address out there? Oh sure. Uh G G O L five nine two nine at gmail dot com. Spell um, that real quick. G G O L Five nine two nine at gmail dot com. Perfect. Anyone in Utah or close to Utah want to do something? Contact this man. And again, yeah, anyone who wants to do a social event, let me know. Uh, I'm I'm seriously after the Souk thing. I'm completely convinced now that there is a, a small army of flat earthers out there, and I'm going to do whatever I can to put them together. You are a sergeant. You must have an army. <laughs> nice. Nice, yeah. I've I've heard well, the sergeant you, stuff since I was like in second grade, but uh, but thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, nice anything else? I hate to do this to you. Myself. The what? It's nice to talk to someone else besides myself. I hear you, man. I totally hear you. Hey, I hate to do this to you, but there's there's calls piling up. So any shout outs yeah, you yeah, want to yeah, yeah. before you before you head off? Yeah. Let's get other people in here. No, 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 no. I not not with us. Uh, oh. uh, any, any shout outs you want to give to anybody? Because I, you, you gotta. I mean, you can stay on if you want, but d- don't talk. Oh, shout I mean, out to every flat earther out there. Spread right. the truth. All right, man. Anyway, you have a good night. Okay. You too. All right. See ya. See ya. All right. I'm gonna pick up seven one nine. I guess. All right, seven one nine. You are on live with Strange World. Where are you calling from? Hey, this is Carrie from Colorado Springs. Hey, Carrie. What's going on? And make sure you turn down your radio, and don't be nervous. You don't sound right. I was I was already trying to be prepared with that. Well, that's all right. You're doing ah. okay. Se- seven oh six five. Oh my god, it's not working. Hang that's, on, hang on, hang on. That's all right. Okay. Uh, okay. Seven six five area code. Don't don't call in right now because we're probably going to go to break with Carrie. Carrie, you got five minutes. Carrie. Okay. Hey, I have, I am now going to be, I got approved for Colorado. It's flat plate. Nice. Uh, Yeah. So I'm going to send you a picture as soon as I get it. I'm thinking Mark of starting a meetup group in Colorado Springs, but I'm like that guy in Utah. I, I've never, I haven't met anyone. I talk to people. Luckily the people around me love me and they know I'm already crazy because I've been drinking the living water for nine years you know got it got it hey um uh <laughs> you have to go to break let's, let's do this no no we don't have to go to break for for four minutes but oh. let's do this throw your email address out first and foremost okay it's care dot b c a r e dot b e e nine 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 at gmail perfect and my youtube channel is four eyes to see the number four eyes Number two, S E A. Excellent, excellent. I think yeah. I'm going to turn. I'm, yeah. I think I'm going to turn this into a regular thing where I'm just going to try to connect people. And the peanut gallery, yeah. by the well, the the peanut gallery, which works with me on a on a weekly basis, they're they're also in Colorado Springs. Oh, really? Yep. So right there, I know there's there's a <laughs> lot. Believe me when I say this, there's a lot of flat earthers out there, and they don't even know it. It's not like Fight Club where you walk around looking for bruises and black eyes. There's a lot well, of flat earthers. Yeah. I went to my mechanic today because I've been having this tire tire problem. First, it was my front right tire, 
kept going flat. I had to put air in it every three days. Mm -hmm. That went away. It went to the left front tire, and they fixed it for me and found a nail in it. And now it's the back left tire. So I went over to the mechanic and I said, well, my new plates are on their way. And it says it's flat on my license plate. And you know what? It's not about my tires. And it's not about my chest. (laughs) And it's not about musical notes. Yeah. And it's not about musical notes. (laughs) Yeah. Nice. Exactly. I mean, seriously, Simi, I'd I'd love to see that, you know, because I just came from Colorado, well, relatively recently. Right. You were in Boulder, right? Boulder. So, yeah, send send me those It's Flat uh, Colorado plates, and I will definitely include them in the slideshow and make it into a thumbnail. You know, Mark, my story is backwards. I have spent years researching. I'm not like... If you said what religion or what faith, whatever, well, is there an all of the above box, you know, or well, none of the above, you know, well, it's like that. So I, I started reading the Bible and researching words. Well, ever since I started with the flat earth thing, there's so many words I had not researched like earth, world, wall, yeah. kidneys, Armageddon. I I I mean, like I spent a hundred hours in the last ten days researching words that are flat Earth related. Wow! And I'm oh my gosh! So I'm I am kind of a little scared because uh, whenever I bring up the Bible to people, um, <laughs> in my groups anyway, they're like, "Whoa, I don't go that Bible." <laughs> yeah, you know, but yeah. it's all in there. It is in there. I hear you, and hey. I want. I got about, yeah, got about yeah. 60 seconds to the break. Do you, 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 of course, have checked out some of Rob Skiba's stuff, testingtheglobe.com. Right, right. Yeah. I, and, yeah, I, um, it's hard for me if there's too much drama going on, and even it, when it's spilling over into the flat world, it's yeah. like, come on, guys. We're living flat now. We don't have drama. <laughs> I hear you. Right? I totally hear you. Right. Any, um, any, I, again, hate to do this to you, but the calls are just rolling in and we got to go to break well, here no, in a second. that's any, awesome. Yeah. Any, any shout outs before we uh, send you to break? Hey, I want to shout out to all my kids, all my kids and my 10 to 12 grandkids. And <laughs> yeah, the earth is flat. Yay. Right on. <laughs> on. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for all you do, Mark. You're uh, happy amazing. to do it. Hey, you have a good one in Colorado. Yeah. Send me those plate picks when you get a chance. I will do it. All okay. right. Take all right. care, hon. Okay. Bye. Bye bye. Phone number to call in is 720-897-6111. That's 720-897-6111. Interesting things. I'm you know, I'm glancing at the chat every once in a while and yeah. Uh, the 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 movie Sausage Party, <laughs> horrible, amazingly bad language is a super sexist movie. That is an animated movie, not for kids. Do not let your kids watch this. Eight four five, we'll we'll pick you up as soon as the break ends, or maybe call back in like thirty seconds when we go to break. Uh, Sausage Party though has some amazing flat Earth uh, undertones, overtones, a hidden subtle message there. Check it out if you get a chance. Sausage Party, you gotta bear with every all the, everything else. So, oh, hey, we're going to break. So I'm going to pick up 765 before we're going to break. Can you stay through the break? Okay. Stay, stay through the break, okay? Three minutes. You are now tuned into the truth frequency. Your protection from deception. T-L-R. Truth Frequency Radio. Welcome back to Strange World. I'm your host, Mark Sargent. And before we get to the caller that's on the line, appreciate everyone that's calling in. Just be patient. I gotta, I'll take them, well, not necessarily in the order they are received because they're bouncing all over the place, but no worries. We'll, we'll get to you guys. Uh, 
uh, DITRH YouTube channel sent me a quick link. He's listening to the show. And he mentioned that somebody already made a video on Sausage Party. And I did know this. I just didn't remember the name of the video. It's called Sausage Party Reveals the Flat Earth, blah, blah, blah. All you have to do is type that in, uh, Sausage Party Reveals the Flat Earth, and you'll see it. I think it's like 20 minutes long, and the, the first 10 minutes of it are, are actually really good. He catches all the, the the great points. So, again, check that out. Don't know exactly who wrote Sausage Party. I'm sure Seth Rogen and team had something to do with it. That's great. And, yeah, your caller, where are you calling from? I am calling from Indiana. Cool. Is this your first time? Yes, this is my first time talking to you, Mark. All right. What do you What do you got for me? What do you, what do you want to talk? About? Um, I'm so excited. I just, you know, I want to thank you for waking me up and all the good work that you do. You know, and um, I just wanted to say really shortly. Um, uh-huh. uh, at least Morpheus had a, a a blue pill. You know, I mean, yeah, I feel uh, yeah, like a pill that just, everyone should have taken. Yeah, I feel like you just made me go straight. I have no way to get back. To the globe Earth now, I know. you know. I'm so. You didn't even. You didn't give me an option, Mark. Uh, I'm sorry. I know. I feel. I feel bad. I feel. I remember that line that Cipher used in the Matrix, where he goes, "You know why? Oh, why? You know, didn't I take the blue pill?" Uh, right. I, I, exactly. I, I'm sorry in that regards. Well, honestly, in, and if you, you if you've listened to some of my stuff, you know that when I went into this, I thought for sure that's what I was looking for was the blue pill. I thought when I put my clues out there and, and people started talking to me, thought for sure someone would say, no, 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 you got it all wrong. Here's the blue pill. Go back to sleep. And it yeah. never happened. No, I mean, that's pretty much the same place I was and I, I ex- exact same story as you. I went to Flat Earth because it was the last conspiracy. I had debunked most of them. Sure. but. I felt like I'll just jump on this one and see what's going on. But I just wanted to um, say that we should all, we should all say, since we're all flat earthers, we should say N D T and quit wasting our time saying Neil deGrasse Tyson. Okay. Yeah, and, Life is too N-D-T, short. Like it. Like N D T. It's much, it's much quicker. Let's move on with our lives. We shouldn't spend hours of our lives saying three names that I agree. pretty much. I agree. And yeah, yeah. And why not? I mean, it's not like there's other Neil Tysons out there that anyone cares about. In fact, the only Tyson anyone of any relevance is Mike Tyson. And he hasn't Absolutely. been, he hasn't done anything for 20 years. Right. I was listening to this interview and I know they're old because I could tell it was already after Joe Rogan uh, uh, conceded on uh, we went to the moon and all this nonsense. Yeah. And he was talking about he Neil deGrasse Tyson said it is easier to go to the moon than to fake it. Yeah, I remember that he interview. Dead. He, he that was, was dead that was furious about it. Yeah, I remember that. That was awful. And then he started talking about, well, it's with that much fuel. You would only have a rocket with that much fuel if you were actually going to the moon. Like, he was he was just he was just talking about fuel consumption as if there was no way to dump the fuel. Yeah. Oh, no, I know. It's like, yeah, I have a full tank of gas in my car. Obviously, I'm going to Phoenix. It's like, yeah, what? and every single time Joe tried to say, hey, you know, reeling in and say, don't just admit to the untrained eye. This does kind of look funny, but Neil would, would not come down off of it. And it, it just blew me away. And I, I, I just wanted to uh, throw the NDT out there. And uh, yeah, I just don't understand how anyone could be so pompous and into themselves. Yeah. So. I would much rather have questions that can't be answered than answers that can't be questioned. Nice. Good one. Any, any, uh, any shout outs before I let you I, head off into the night? I do want to send a shout out to my, my beautiful girlfriend. She's been with me through all of this. It, it took her not as long as I thought. And I also want to send a shout out to, um, my mom, because she was in the army, and literally, I said, "Mother, what if the world was a different shape than they told you?" And she said, "I can believe that." Nice. Boom. She took to it just like that. So, Excellent. thank you very much, Mark. Oh, my pleasure. And uh, hey, you have a good rest of your night, okay? Oh yeah. And by the way, my name's Adam. I'm Adam from Indiana. All right, Adam from Indiana. Cool. Talk to you soon. Thank you, Mark. All right. Bye bye.
Bye. Okay, so let's see if we can get to at least one email tonight. Uh, and the guy said, hey, can you prove this article wrong? And it's from Popular Science Magazine. It's on the website, popsci.com. And the article is called 10 Easy Ways You Can Tell for Yourself That the Earth Is Not Flat. But i got to pick up a call from 845 Area Code. You are on live with Strange World 845. Who are you and where are you from? Don't be nervous. 845. Your microphone's not on. 845. And he hung up. And he's now he's calling back. Let's try you again. 845 is having technical difficulties, but we're going to try him again anyway. Where are you? Who are you? What are we talking about? Hey, can you hear me? Oh, what? <laughs> Dude, wh- you should not be having technical problems. I don't know what's going on. Damn iPhones, man. They just suck. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So how how are things in New York tonight? Uh, it's drying up. It was sleety and uh, rainy yesterday. The roads were fun this morning. You know, you're you're the perfect person to call in right now because I can rattle off to you this popular science article. Nice. The, uh, so somebody sent this to me. He goes, he goes, hey, this popular science article looks pretty legit, right? And so I'm going through, and it was published January 26th of last year, you know, so it was a full year ago. And then the first line of this, it goes, this story was originally published on Smarter Than That in 2008. So eight years prior, okay? I just want to rattle, yeah. rattle some of these off to you. And these are the top 10 reasons how you know, and they say this, unequivocally, absolutely, positively, that it's 100% not flat. Ready? Here we go. Uh, one, the moon. <laughs> That's that's literally the line. Now, now the humanity knows quite positively the moon is not a piece of cheese or a playful god. Blah blah blah. Like the 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 sheer observations of the shadows on the moon prove that we're not flat. Uh, two ships in the horizon. Big shocker there. That's literally number two. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's like okay. Three varying star constellations. That's what what. What, you, so you're not going to – and I'd throw that back at them. You know, they're saying that um, the farther you go down the equator, the farther the known constellations go towards the horizon. So you know, the, the star, star constellations supposedly change from you, when you go from one hemisphere to the other. And I still come back at them, and I think you would too, and say, OK, what about parallax, which is what uh, Zachary Hubbard was getting into. He just he didn't understand the concept with uh, Jaron last night in that wonderful debate where – Jaron's trying to tell me, it's like, look, parallax exists. Zachary didn't even understand the, the, the distances of stars. It's like, look, if the closest star is four light years away and there are other stars that are millions of light years away, we should see some sort of parallax scrolling where, you know, one star moves faster than the other across the sky. And, and it changes. So We have two different movements. You're telling us four movements and we only see one yeah. rotation on the North Star. Exactly. Exactly. Number four, shadows and sticks. Pff, uh, whatever. Shadows and sticks doesn't mean anything to me because you're assuming the, yeah. si- the size of the objects. We, no. Uh, let's see. Number five, seen farther from higher. I have no idea why people are using that. 269 area code. I will pick you up in the next call, hopefully. Uh, seen farther from higher. They're saying, oh, that only works on a globe. Not, it's like yeah, that's- seen farther from higher works on a flat earth too. <laughs> well, it's, it's, literally, it's like look you go higher you see farther period i don't care where what terrain you're on if you, you any object you know any structure once you get up high that, that's the point uh, that's why you have like on really really flat surfaces like airports you have control towers up elevated right. you know even Indeed. even something right. simple like a lifeguard tower at the beach tower higher you can look farther you don't ha- doesn't have to be a curved surface um, wow. sorry. Uh, it's number six and I couldn't make these up if I tried. Number six literally is called ride a plane, <laughs> <laughs> ride a plane and you'll see it. Right. And, and, and I'm, I'm reading this thing. It's like, but planes can travel in a relatively straight line a very long time will not fall off any edges. They can also circle the earth without stopping. That is literally one of their answers. Unbelievable. Oh. Number seven. And this is Popular Science Magazine. This is not, you know, a, a weakling out there. These guys have published a lot of science over decade after decade. Number seven, look at the other planets. 
Yeah. The other That's planets true. are spheres, therefore we must be a sphere. Number eight, the existence of time zones. Time zones can only work on a spherical Earth. Number seven, which is not true, if it, especially if you have a directional light source or, I don't right. know, if the sun is much, much smaller. Um, nine, of course, you knew this was coming, the center of gravity. Yeah. Gravity proves a spherical Earth. Yep. Yeah, because gravity doesn't exist on a flat Earth either. And number 10, uh, and yeah, th- they had to end on this one. All the images from space, right? Yes. The curvature of the Earth is also visible in – they actually write this four times and underline it. Many, 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 many photos snapped by astronauts from the ISS. On yeah. Frickin re- which is why they updated this article because the ISS wasn't you know, putting out – oh, God, that picture is horrible. Just That's, horrible. You know, some out that the telescope, the Galileo, said he saw, uh, what is it, Jupiter's moons or whatever. Yeah. It was no more than like a good set of binoculars. Oh, yeah. What the hell is that? Yeah. Chris, Chris, Chris Everhard, who's on this network with me, yeah, when I, when I, he interviewed me and he, I did not know going in he was not a flat earther. And he says, oh, yeah, I, can, I have personally witnessed the moons of Jupiter. And uh, it's like, well, um, that doesn't mean you know. You're you're assuming the planet. He he does. He just doesn't understand the planetary model. For for some people, it's just too big for them. They don't know what to do with it. Yeah. So I, anyway. I just like every time I ever look through a telescope, all I see is a light. It, yeah. It looks flat. Could be round, maybe could be a sphere, but it looks like a flat disk, like a light. Yep. I don't know. <laughs> yep. I absolutely yeah. agree. Oh, switch it up because uh, I've been like it. Actually, uh, I was going to say it is sort of like Fight Club because we do get bruises. People attack us <laughs> for yeah. talking about this, and uh, so I switched up my quote from a different person. Maybe you'll, you'll guess what men are like when they lose their temper, they lose their worth. Men are like what? Men are like steel when, when they, they lose, lose their, their temper. temper. Oh, that's clever. They lose their worth. That's good. That's good. Let's and, see if the peanut and, calorie come back, comes back with anything else there. He's probably monitoring chat. Of course, the last thing he threw out was that I should not forget about um, uh, Tyson Chicken. Oh, um, he did send a quote, though, and I don't know if he, I think he sent that when you first called in. I think he saves up quotes for you, actually, to be honest. The trouble with <laughs> the, here, here's the quote. The trouble with the world is not that people know too little but that they know so many things that ain't so. That's from Mark Twain. Yeah. There you go. Good one. Very good. That's good. I, I, I don't know if he's going to come up with another one before you leave. Oh, um, any, uh, anything else before? Unfortunately, it's a super – oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. Chuck. Yeah. Oh, that, that, that quote you have might be a Chuck Norris quote. Absolutely. Absolutely. He caught that. And he also said, violence is my last option. And – that's the way it should be, you know. I, I, I like that guy. He always was a good guy. Nice. You know? I keep remembering. And, this, I keep remembering this line. Not to diminish your your you guys trading intellect, but uh, I remember this line. You remember the old Sylvester Stallone movie Cobra, one of those bad eighties. Oh, right? of course. Cobra, where where the reporter asks him after you know he rescues a hostage situation and he just shoots up the whole store, and uh, the reporter goes. You know, did you use unnecessary force? And he goes, I used everything I had. <laughs> <It's> like, <what>? <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? That's a great line. Fine. Anyway, uh, right, anything well. else before you go? Uh, I wasn't going to give out my email just yet, but if anybody wants to catch me on Xbox One, I play GTA all the time, and I'm Zulu One, Z-U-L-U-O-N-E, all capitals. Nice. Uh, I will throw one quote out as a, as a kick you out the door. Um, this, this, this one's from Stallone, of course. I believe there's an, really, he said this? I believe there's an inner power that makes winners or losers, and the winners are the ones who really listen to the truth of their hearts. Wow. Uh, hey, you know what? That leads into, listen to that, uh, Michael Tellinger thing I sent you. Well, I don't know. I'm sure everybody sent it to you, too. I, everybody's sending me Tellinger uh, right now. Um, I'm curious. I'm kind of. I'm kind of waiting to see if he comes back. You know, because he's catching. He's catching flack like Skiba did, and he's yeah, he's, and he's now kind of, he's now thinking. Oh, whoa, wait! My fan base, you know, is uh, yeah. not really not really jiving this yet. Yes, 
yes. But I, I kind of like how he said he's like, I'm stuck on curvature. <laughs> he's like, it's irrefutable. Whatever. <laughs> I, I, I was loving it. Loving yeah, we'll see where that goes. Yeah. All right, man. Hey, right. thanks Thanks for sticking with me. All right. You have a good one. Thanks for all the good work. All right. Have a good night. Uh, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, phone number to call in. I, I actually might get through an email or two now. Is uh, 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111. And I'm looking through chat if there's anything really interesting. Uh, let's see here. Who's the secretary? I'm not telling. Uh, Jaron had an awesome show. Yes, he did. Jaron, you know, he, I don't know if he posted it already, but Jaron versus Zachary Hubbard, both on this network. Zachary into Gematria and Jaron into Flat Earth and apparently never the two shall meet because Zachary thinks that it's a complete psyop and, and that all of us are, are faking it. It's like, or he thinks that we're just unwitting pawns in a giant game. Eh, maybe. You never, uh, you never know. Uh, let's see here. Email real quick. This one's from Di. Oh, man. I'm never going to get through anything. Okay. 509 area code. Here's your shot. You are on live with Strange World. Who are you? Don't be nervous. What do you want? And uh, what are we talking about? We're talking about Flat Earth, right? Yeah, we're talking about Flat Earth. I don't know <laughs> what else I would talk about, honestly. Yeah. Maybe you could bring up <laughs> anything you want, but I, I, I'm kind yeah. of partial to it, as you know. Yeah, I'm from uh, 509, the eastern part of Washington. I know 509 area code. I, was, um, I went to school for a very intoxicated year in Pullman, Washington, and went to a basketball camp in Spokane. Very nice. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I just kind of, my phone might die on me, so I got to get this one pretty quick. But I just wanted to say that I uh, definitely uh, appreciated the video that I saw. I was, right before I, I saw your Flat Earth Clues, I was watching, I always wondered about aliens, and, you know, I just grew up Catholic. I grew up with the, the Bible and kind of questioned the Genesis creation theory and all this other stuff, and, yeah. When I saw your video, it just led me down the right path. It just it brought me to come to some really good conclusions as to what I believe the world is now. So, cool. Thanks for that. Right on. I uh, get, happy to help. I am. You know, I initially started this out as a very nervous experiment on, on you know, on an idea that I had. That I did not have one hundred percent confidence in, and now it's the opposite. I'm going to preach this till the bitter end. You know, kind of like the the. Yeah. Charlton Heston line, you know, from my cold dead hands, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's uh, it's interesting. I've been, uh, well, I tell you, it put through me for a loop, right? just like I think it probably does anybody who really sees it for what it is. And uh, man, it's it's a deep, deep rabbit hole, and it puts you down other rabbit holes, and then oh, yeah. you just kind of. Yeah, you re you have to re-examine pretty much everything, and that and that goes along with the science side of things. And that is, if flat Earth is real, you and I don't care what ology you you got your masters in, you have to re-examine it. Geology, hydrology, archaeology, take your pick. Not just astronomy and astrophysics, which just get erased overnight. Uh, people, yeah. every conspiracy, you have to revisit. And say, okay, how yeah. does this fit in with this new model? There's only one that I know of that absolutely gets shot to pieces, and that's Richard Hoagland's you know, millions of people living on the moon scenario and Mars. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's it's pretty amazing. I, I uh, you know I, I probably lost one of my sons to this because he doesn't. He just kind of got really mad at me, and but like, he's really smart with science, and he's like, well, at least what he thought was science. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but the rest of my family, they are all they came on board pretty quick. So he still talks to me. It's just that he, I just don't talk to him about this anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. So the, some some people you're not gonna be able to reach until mainstream tells them they're not gonna believe it. And even when mainstream tells them, they'll probably have that you know sit down and or go to the liquor store and buy you know a big bottle of expensive something and say, okay, what the hell? So we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, any, have you ever any, watched? Go ahead. I ever watched the Ezekiel, um, uh, I can't remember the name of the video, but it's by D13 Watchmen, Ezekiel's Wheels or something like that. Um, I've, I've, well, I've looked into Ezekiel's Wheels, you know, many, many times over the years. I mean, it's obvious, obvious it's not a, uh, 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 I mean, it's a machine, it's a form of machinery. You know, is it divine or is it a higher, in, you know, just a higher technology? I think it's a higher technology. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, but yeah. 
I can let you go on the next call. I just wanted to give you a shout out. Thanks or, very much, uh, man. And uh, hey, have a good rest of your night out in Eastern Washington. Will do. Okay. <laughs> right. Bye-bye. Okay. Uh, we still got time before the break. Let's try to finish at least two emails here. Uh, the flatter snowball keeps rolling. I am getting constantly taken back by the sheer numbers of people coming out or come oh, man. It's never going to happen. I'm never going to finish anything. 269 area code 269. Wait, did you hang up 269? Are you still there? 269. Nope. They hung up. You, you don't have, if I say, no, if you call in and you, it's, it's, I, I'm not, I'm not, it's not that I'm unhappy to see the call in. It's just, you know, I'm German mostly. And so I really like to get through some things. It's I, I, anyway, uh, let me finish up the email. Uh, now two, six, nine calls. That's perfect. Don't hang up this time or I'm going to lose it. You are on live with strange world. Two, six, nine area code. Hey, what's up, Mark? This hey, is, this is reference Shane. I'm sorry, two. This is Reverend Shane. Reverend Shane? Indeed. indeed. Oh, all right, Reverend Shane. What, what, are we, what, what has prompted you to call the show tonight? Well, I wanted to ask you uh, regarding um, alternate dimensions and invisible beings. I believe in them. Um, alternate yeah. dimensions, definitely. Uh, why not? You know, the, the line I like to use is we are, I'll use the radio and uh, version cause everyone understands it. Look, there's country music playing around you right now all over the place. And the only reason you don't hear it is cause you don't have a receiver to tune it in. Same thing with television stations. There are a ton of television stations all around you that are broadcasting. Who is to say that on uh, a technology level that's only a couple notches above that, uh, you know, not to steal from the Disney movie, uh, what was it, World of Tomorrow or Future World or whatever that movie was, uh, yes. that, that's, that could be happening how we speak. And if there are other dimensions, could there be other people living them? Sure. Why not? Frequencies? I, again, we can do this with limited technology now. Why, why wouldn't I believe in it? So Sure. Yeah, yeah. And what about as far as how, how I wonder how that connects to lucid dreams and also other life experiences and also uh, after death experiences. Agreed. Agreed. Um and by the way the peanut gallery chimed in and said the Disney movie was called Tomorrowland. So thank you peanut gallery. The um uh yeah, when it comes to dreams and near death experiences, I mean I've got I don't want to get into it too much here because it's really a whole another conversation, but I've always believed that uh dreams and after death experiences uh can be interpreted a whole bunch of different ways and it may not be as ultimately uh people like to ref- tie it I I'm not, I'm not smashing religion. I was raised born again Christian. Uh, but they like to tie it to the to like a single divine concept, which is which is fine. You know, again, whatever whatever religion you follow, you know, everyone's got their own take on that. But it seems to me yeah. that if time is infinitely relative, and you know, because dream, dreams can be awfully chaotic, uh, that it's very possible that dreams aren't just you know, or near death experiences aren't just a us passing on to the the, the great. The great beyond, but maybe another uh, a shift in dimensions, just another frequency. Very possible. Not gonna not gonna shoot it oh. down. Why would I? O- I open up my day with flat Earth. I, I don't have the right to to condemn a, an idea like that. Oh oh, for sure. Yeah yeah, I'm I'm with you on that. It's it's um, uh, especially with, with the concept of lucid dreams when um you have uh, memory. Of the uh, of both time and space yeah. with within yeah yeah you 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 have the memory of the dream world well while you from you know both yeah. worlds or I, reality I, or dream I agree hey we got about thirty seconds or less till the till the break you want to do any shout outs before I send you off unfortunately uh well just a shout outs to all the flat earthers and everybody that thinks for themselves right on thank you thank you very much for calling in by the way and and feel free to call in again okay. Peace out, brother. All right. See you, man. 
All right, we're going to go to break. Uh, phone number to call in is 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111. And I promise I will look through the chat on this next break, uh, You know, because this is the first time I'm actually even looking in chat all, all whatsoever. And, and the first thing I see already before we're going is The Earth is Flat, movie 2017 is going to be released. Young Boy's Journey, raised in an Amish family who was led to believe the Earth was flat, directed by Sam Wickey. Interesting. Stars Sam Wickey. Kasha Fawcett, I don't know a lot of them, but it should be interesting. The poster's interesting. Sidewalk going to like a earth rise. But we'll have to see how, how that turns out. That's really cool. So you guys don't have any questions or, or comments you want to throw into chat during the break. I'll, I'll look over with uh, my wonderful yet sometimes careless secretary and we'll see if there's anything in there that, that uh, catches our eye. Okay, guys? This is Truth Frequency Radio. Welcome back to Strange World Part 3 of 4. And no, no, I'm not picking up that call yet. 908, settle down. Uh, I will pick you up, though, in a second because I've got to get in shameless plug and uh, flat earth news for the week. Uh, but I will. I promise I will pick up 908. So um, uh, free site, of course, is enclosedworld.com. My YouTube channel is Mark K. Sargent. The book is called Flat Earth. With clues and the subscription site is marksargent.com. Check it out when you get a chance. And when I'm going into uh, fl- uh, the Flat Earth News, before I even go to Flat Earth News, I got to mention real quick because my music's changed a few times recently. And actually, as of this morning, uh, Fleetwood Mac has also now restricted their music on YouTube. So if you use a Fleetwood Mac track, and they find out, and it's, even if it's way after the fact, they will come back, and all they'll do is they'll mute the video. They won't even smack you with anything, and they won't even tell you. You won't get an email saying your, your video was muted. You know, all of a sudden, you'll go in, and it's like, wait, why is there no sound here? And I'll say, oh, it was muted because of this. So I've removed Fleetwood Mac Tusk from, I don't know, six videos that I did earlier. So you guys bear with me on that. But we've, we've got pretty much all the copyright stuff taken care of. For the most part. So I'm going to YouTube and I'm typing in Flat Earth and I'm setting the filter to this week. I'm not doing it by upload date at the moment. And the things that, of course, catch my eye, some wonderful stuff, even before I look down this list, I have got to mention Rob Skiba. Go to his channel, uh, SKIBA. He did some great videos on uh, atmospheric magnification or um, atmospheric lensing or atmospheric looming as you want to call it. Great stuff. ODD reproduced it. Great, great, great stuff. So check that out. Um, Jaron went in and debated Zachary, which I mentioned earlier, Zachary Hubbard from this network, and thoroughly just made him look silly. I, I felt bad. It's like the, the, anyone that goes up against Flat Earth, there's one of two things happen. Either they're, they go in with no clue whatsoever and they because they just don't think it's real or they go in – quoting science. They believe NASA, they believe JPL, they believe Neil deGrasse Tyson, and that no, science would never, ever lie to us. 
which is just simply isn't true. Uh, other things that I catch in Flat Earth News, Eric DeBay, of course, The History of Flat Earth, which is a pretty good video, I got to admit. It's got 60,000 views in a week. That's pretty impressive. He doesn't really say kind things about me at the end. Flat Earth is the Truth by ODD. That's running about 18 minutes. That's all excellent. There's Rob Skiba's video, Does the Atmosphere Solve the Problem of Sunsets on a Flat Earth? Great. Uh, ODD, another one. He, In fact, ODD reproduced it. Flat Earth, Atmospheric Lensing Effect. Uh, feed your mind. Zachary Hubbard, of course, comes back after the Jaron debate and says the delusional flat earth community afterthoughts on Jaronism debate about the flat earth, blah, blah, blah. He hates this. So uh, feel free. Have at him. You know, show no mercy when it comes to Zachary. He had his chance. He had his chance for three hours. And if he's going to drag his heels, he's going to pay the price. I'd like to him to debate me. You know what? <laughs> Have him go up against Jeffrey Grupp. Jeffrey, I don't think he'd even make it through. I think Jeffrey, he'd just cry at some point. Uh, I did a video, of course, on the flat earth, the 3 million flat earth search results deleted. And, of course, that fluctuates, but check it out when you get a chance. Type in flat earth and when just, just hit enter. And normally it should be 7 million hits, 7 million plus. But it fluctuates between 7 and 4 and has been staying at 4 for a long time now. Although it does kind of spike every once in a while. But you want to see the real results – Type in flat earth and sort by upload date. Uh, currently, it is at 15 million, and that's why I made the video that I did. I mean, it's always been tracking up, and I'm so pleased to be part of the flat earth community because it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Uh, there's the Zachary Hubbard on Jaronism Raw. Jaronism posted that about 15 hours ago. Let's see here. There's so many pages. In fact, I learned because I didn't really sort by upload date, and that'll give you stuff even you know three minutes old. Amazing the amount of videos that are cranked out in any given day. I I really I knew it was out there. I just had no idea. Uh, let's see here, Russian vids, the flattered sun and the vanishing point, quasi luminous, keeps doing his stuff. Uh, let's see, Rob Skiba. There's the flat Earth and atmospheric magnification short version, twenty six minutes long, and it's got about ten thousand hits. The Morgyle, Flat Earth Documentary 2017, Procession at the Equinoxes. And well, I'm only on page two. There's so much content. Of course, I did an interview in 97 on the 33 show. That was fun. And of course, I have to mention, if anyone's doing a Flat Earth license plate, remember you get six, seven, or eight letters on your license plate. And that uh, really uh, just kind of applies to the United States and Canada. Please, if you if you do flat earth or or it's flat or no curve or whatever you can come up with, come up with something creative, by all means, send it to me. I will turn it into the slideshow. I will turn it into a thumbnail and that'll be super great. Oh, I got to mention again because uh, I mentioned them at the beginning, Sunny Peaches, the love letter to NASA. Great video that she did and the channel Daphne Rimmel, R-I-M-M-E-L, hopefully I pronounced that right, the personal flat earth journey. Parts 1 through 14, I think, right now. Excellent. The the green chlorophyll drink with ice that she drinks is kind of creepy. But you know what? I'm not going to, you know, I, I have my own weird eating habits as well. So phone number to call in is 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111. By God, I think I might actually make it through this email. From Diametric Opposition, the flat earth snowball keeps rolling. I am getting constantly taken back by the sheer number of people coming out or considering flat earth. What a game changer it is. The fact and evidences keep refreshing and expanding like a race to the irrefutable truth. And here's a phone call from 913. Anyway, I love your shows. Love to hear uh, you and Michael Tellinger have a discussion. Uh, I can't do Michael Tellinger because he's out of flat earth right now. 913 area code. Where are you calling from? Who are you? And why are you interrupting my emails? I'm I'm just kidding. Don't be nervous. <laughs> hey, Mike. It's Joe from Iowa. Hey. Hey. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, have you seen... I just found this video today. I think it came out actually mid-January, but it was Flatter, uh Truth Does Not Fear Investigation by Ibler Ed- Productions. I, I don't know if I've seen it. Is it good? It's it's really it's uh really good. Uh, I was just really blown away by it. It doesn't look like any of his other videos are flat Earth related, but uh, I guess he said people are pestering him to make a flat Earth, flat Earth video, and it's just like a compilation of uh, pretty much everyone. 
And wow. it's, uh, it, was, it was way better than I, way better than I thought it was going to be, but like, uh, I just saw it and I was going to pass it on. So, uh, S- send it to me yeah. if, if you get a chance. Send me, oh, send yeah. me the link and I'll, um, I mean, if sure. it's, if it's four hours long, I may skip uh, through a few things. No, watch a lot no, of stuff, it's just but... like 40, it's like a 40 minute. It's a, it's a shorter one, but it's just got a really good blend. I mean, everybody that's out there, um, you were, you're on it too, man, towards the end. Really? Um, it, it's good. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Uh, I'll, uh, shoot you an email. Okay. Super cool. Um, but, uh, yeah, I just want to say hi. I, uh, I'm listening live and it's like, Hey, you know, just going to call in. Well, thanks. Thanks very much. Hey, and, uh, you know, feel free to call in again. All right, man. Have, have a good night. All right. You too. All right. Bye. Bye. Uh, d- let me answer the Michael Tellinger email a little better. Michael Tellinger, everyone was super excited for him to, to be on board and he did a flat earth video and kind of like Rob Skiba, he's in that stage where he's getting just cracked by his subscribers because they, it was like, whoa, 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 we were with you for some other things, but this flat earth, you're, you're going completely off the reservation. And so now he's kind of taking a step back going, okay, you know, this is the same reason why Alex Jones will not do a flat earth show right now because he's scared. He's afraid of, people are afraid of being embarrassed, you know, of putting, kind of like me, look, I was afraid putting it out there saying, look, I think the earth's flat. Call me crazy. Uh, and very few people did. I mean, yeah, of course people in comments do, but, but face to face, you know, or, or phone messages or actual emails, very few people did that. So thank you diametric for bringing that up. And, and actually I may, it's possible I could get through. Yes. Thank you. Peanut gallery for saying I'm crazy. All right. Marty from the Ozarks. And he writes, uh, I know this is kind of dark, but it's a scenario that is very possible. What if the sole purpose for the governments of the world allowing us to all have social media was to check our behavior patterns and segregate us into groups by the things we like or dislike, post or repost, the videos we make and the ones we've watched? We already know they watch our every move through electronic devices. So they allow us to be informed about the earth being flat just to see how many were indoctrinated correctly through the educational systems and how many still have open minds just so they can know through the Twitter YouTube, Facebook, et cetera, et cetera, who to cage or kill in order to further keep the minds of population in check. There are a lot of people that are so indoctrinated that they would not give a damn if we were all rounded up and crammed into internment camps only to be reprogrammed or killed. They think we are all nuts anyway and not worthy of existence because they cannot see through the deception that we do. Mr. Smith chasing and trying to eliminate Neo, only a much larger scale. We, the ones waking up, are all Neo. So it wouldn't bother them to see us rounded up. It's for the good of humanity, they would say. The powers that control them would tell them that they are trying to help the ones that aren't too far gone and the rest of us that resist are just terrorists and have to be put to death before our sickness spreads and the majority would buy it because they, why would the government lie to them? How do you keep a lie hidden? You eliminate anyone that knows the truth and all evidence that supports the truth. Maybe we have all been baited into giving up our beliefs just so they know who to come for. Marty, flat out. Um, yeah, Marty, if of course, it's a possible scenario. It's it's one of two. I tend to go with the glass half full, and that you know, hope springs eternal. And that if you believe in great, wonderful plot lines, the the good guys win at the end. I think it's possible. Remember, the the Matrix was a very very dark movie, but it did have some sort of a positive ending, or at least a, a push. Uh, you know, a a check, not a checkmate. A check. You know, it was it was a push on both sides. Uh, let's see here. This email is from Soman. Serious. Oh, he was talking about the um, uh, scientists have talked about a solving mystery of Earth's core, and it's on Yahoo.com. You can, you guys can look this up. He goes seriously. All of a sudden, in 2017, they have a development in the Earth's core, and how do they know what elements are involved if they've never gotten anywhere near the supposed center? Is there some technology or device that can penetrate and analyze the composition of stuff miles below? No, of course not. Uh, you know, we can only dr- drill down eight miles, and after that, we have no idea what's down there. Absolutely none. But that doesn't stop them from 
Again, look in the science books from giving you cross sections of the Earth going down 4,000 miles to the center, if you believe in it, a cross section of the moon, a cross section of. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I was reading chat. Daryl, you don't have to be scared. It is not, I, he, he's not talking about, a, well, I mean, it's a, it's a possibility, but I don't believe in it. So it's easy. It's okay. Hang on there, Daryl. Don't worry. Um, the. Uh, the cross sections, everything. How can you tell me the the geological cross section of Neptune when we've never even landed anything on Neptune? If you even believe we went to Neptune, it doesn't make any sense. I I can understand. I maybe you might. I might give you a half of a percentage point to say that. Oh yeah, we can use ground penetrating radar and tell you exactly what all the bands of of the Earth are. Maybe if I gave you that, but I'm not going to give you every other planet. I just don't believe in them. Uh, let's see here. Frank writes, space-based flight tracking comes closer with launch of satellites. And there's an article on WSG.com, space-based space based flight tracking comes closer with satellites, blah, blah, blah. It looks like they've heard your plight, Mark, the one about not being able to track planes by GPS over the water. What's the next hole in the dam they'll try with futility to plug? And then there's the article. You guys can look that up. Not very interesting. They're not going to plug anything. It's like the oh, I was telling you about the, the Google X competition. That's just a bunch of crap, too. Phone number to call in, by the way, is 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111. And th- for the first time ever, I am actually looking, and I am embarrassed to say this, I am actually looking at the chat for my show. Because I'm only, you know, I'm a one-man guy, with the exception of my careless and mostly lovable secretary, uh, I have never been able to actually look in my chat. Now I have actually, there's another laptop over here that's got chat fired up. So if you say something in chat and she elbows me in the ribs, I might actually turn over and take a look at it. So you don't have to email me. And if you don't feel like calling in, uh, you can just put your comment there and I'll, I'll see what I can do. And actually it's it's fairly civil compared to the Jaronism Zachary thing that was last night. I actually had chat. I, I had the TFR chat look, looking at that on the screen. Holy smokes. That was like a forest fire. It was, it was painful to watch. Uh, Kathy Dunson writes, she sends me a link, and it's a really interesting article, what it's like to be an artist at a major space agency. And it's at google.com. Uh, you can look it up at, you know, on the newsstand side of things. What it's like to be an artist at a major space agency. Someone find that link and send it to Matt Boylan because I think he would have an opinion on what it's like to be an artist at a major space agency because he was a number of years ago. And this is one of you – know, so people question Matt's – I don't think I've really heard many people question that NASA would hire artists because they would. You know, they, they do artist rendering all the time. But here's one that's actually still working for him. I don't think he's Canadian. But uh, – and the peanut gallery says, Matt has opinions. Yes, he actually does uh, have opinions. <laughs> all right. Uh, Surf Runner writes – uh, Clyde Lewis Ground Zero interview, which I did with Ground Zero a while back, but I had to re-upload because the um, the video was muted because I used uh, just a tiny – well, it wasn't me and me. It, Clyde used about 30 seconds of the Beatles and even though he did that, three hours of the interview were rendered useless on YouTube. So I had downloaded, re-upload, and people have been watching it again. So this guy writes and goes, Mark, just want to let you know I thoroughly enjoyed hearing you on Ground Zero with Clyde Lewis. I thought you handled everything thrown at you very well. I favorited you on YouTube. The call from Skillet was a riot. Keep up the good work. Truth never gets stolen, never takes a day off. Be well. 780 area code. 780, you are on live with Strange World. If it's your first time, don't be nervous. Where, where are you yes, from? It's, yes, it's Ken from Canada. It's my first time. Thanks. Oh yeah. So we're 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 in Canada? Uh Canada, Alberta, yes. Oh nice. Yeah, I just came back from uh Fort Lauderdale, had a little trip down there and um happened to be in the port uh, Everglades um port there watching the ships go out and it was very interesting. Um four uh ships are all about um 15 stories high they're massive right yeah and they're heading out to sea and i was i was i knew one was going out but there was actually four going out at the same time okay and the interesting thing about it was as they went out i'm not sure if they were going to grand um, bahamas or uh, cuba but they were heading straight out into the ocean the great big big blue ocean there 
and the ships they didn't seem to go um you know they didn't shrink uh over the edge okay they proportionally uh decreased in size both in height and uh width right so yep. that that's an you know so i was thinking gee that's got to be an excellent clue to prove that you know that again that the perspective it just basically shrinks um, uh, as you go, as anything goes oh, yeah. away from you, it shrinks in, in size, right? So yep, yep. The, proportionally the whole, in height and width, right? Yeah, absolutely. The vanishing point argument. And you're lucky yeah, because most people don't even get to see that. Most people have to deal with a whole bunch of distortion, usually from atmospheric conditions that are tied to the water or humidity or what, you know, or both, or combine that with sunlight and that the whole thing that Rob Skeeb is doing with a- atmospheric lensing. You're you're lucky that you got to see it like that, and, and it's too bad you didn't get a chance to film it because yeah, it, it, it would have helped. Was, Go ahead. Yeah, you know, all I had was my. I was just I just wanted wanted to see the one ship because I just happened to uh, know that it was going to go out to sea, and then all of a sudden another one was going out in front of it, and another one was going out in front of it, and then finally it goes out, and another one follows that one. So, and then as I drove, out, you know, I got my vehicle and drove out to the beach there and on the drive, and then looking out there, I thought, oh my god, look at that! They're they're all just shrinking nice. proportionally. Nice. Right? So you uh, you believe her. Uh, oh gosh, yeah. It was. It, it all started with the, uh, with the the about five years ago with the moon landing stuff, and then uh, then I got onto other other interesting topics, and now, yeah, I've got. I'm, I emailed you a little while ago, and I told you I'm getting the um, the flat Earth uh, license plate for Alberta. Right, so, right, right, right. So that's that's going to be here pretty soon, and I'll send you the. I'll send you a, a, a JPEG of that uh, yeah, as soon absolutely. as it arrives. I, I would be honored to, to add it to just about every collection. The, the collection's getting pretty big right now. I just got yeah. Maryland and Colorado's on its way and uh, British Columbia, rumor has it, that might be coming too. So we'll yeah. see. And actually, I was my, I was going to try and up up that. I was going to take it out to Florida and then take it to Johnson Space Center there and, <laughs> and take pictures of, nice. you know, against the Saturn V and all these other things so, too. But uh, maybe somebody else will beat me to it, but we'll see. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Bonus, po- bonus points. Bonus give points you bonus for that. Points if, if you can have your, your flat earth license plate taken in front of one of the NASA logos in the parking lot. Oh, that's, yeah. Oh, yeah. I went to the NASA um, Johnson Space Center Nice. And um, I, you know, they have this globe with the NASA symbol on it, right? This I big know. round orb. I don't know if you've seen it. It's probably about a three meter diameter thing. Yep. Yep. And I actually took my camera. I thought I could do a 24 hour rotating um, image of the orb uh, with the NASA symbol. So I took my camera and I, I took uh, and I, I walked around the thing and I had a like a full full uh, rotation of this globe. On my phone, so I'm not sure if I can uh, send that over email. To yeah, you yeah, yeah. Well, can... my uh, my email's capped it at you know it's, there's there's a couple sites you can do uh, just send it dot com. There's a few others, but you know w- send whatever you want to uh, m sergeant twenty three at comcast dot net, right. but you might have to use a different service to do it. Okay, yeah. So, so I thought that was uh, that would be another way to to start one of your shows, or just put it during your show. Um, and then I was, I was thinking, you know, the other thing on on the airplane on the way there. Uh-huh. Okay, I'm thinking. Okay, so if the Earth is actually round, and you're at thirty whatever thirty thousand feet, let's say, or thirty nine thousand feet, or whatever you are, uh, if you had, um, if you were a surveyor, what they have are auto levels, right? Yeah. So uh, if you're all you have to do is get the instruments sort of level and the the mirrors in it are are on a pivot, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So then you should be able to put that thing somewhere close to um, horizontal on the airplane, and if it's pointing, you know, roughly thirty thousand feet above the horizon, then. Um, let me, if it's yeah, if it's pointing it's, both through. It's not a bad idea. I I know where you're going with this. You got to remember though, if you turn on any sort of laser device on an airplane nowadays, especially if you're in the United States, uh, this, there's going to be people that are going to get the wrong idea. 
this is strictly optical. It's just a, it's just a. Um, oh, there's uh, no, there's no visual. There's representation. no, there's okay. no, there's nothing like that. It's just oh, then, an optical oh, then you're fine. Thing. Then you're fine. Yeah, you, yeah. So if you can have, some, you have to have mount it. So you have some sort of uh, way of mounting it. Uh, you know, to point it out the window, so you can, if it points at, um, if it's a points at the horizon yeah. when it's roughly level, then you know it's flat. Nice. But if it's if you're if the thing is. Um, if you've got the thing and you're looking at the horizon like twenty, thirty thousand feet above the, the 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 where the apex is, then you know that it's um, that it's round. Nice. That's so, a good. That's a good. That's a good experiment. So that's like one, that one. another way to yeah. So cool. any so, uh, anyways, any shout outs before I send you off? Because I there's I, fortunately I'm still backed up. No, just thanks to everyone in Canada listening in and. Uh, continue on the good work and i'll be listening in almost every week well thank you and and send me yeah remember send me your plate or send me a screenshot of it you know even if the licensing oh. department has it for you <laughs> absolutely all right Have thanks man night. talk to you later bart all right bye-bye bye-bye uh before we go to the break let's read one more sh- a couple more short emails maybe uh this one's from eric hey mark i was doing some research on the old armco armco steel corporation where my dad worked i found this inadvertently and found it very interesting it's an old title it's from 1976 thanks eric and it's an interesting picture where uh, kind of a man slash god thing is is i think it's a ribbon of steel but he's coming off a flat earth map so look up ARMCO Steel Corporation. You'll find something very interesting there, guys. Phone number to call in is 720-897-6111. 720-897-6111. Uh, after the break, we'll take a few more calls. We'll read some more emails. Maybe the chat's got some interest going on. Is that Mark dancing in the spacesuit in all of the audio interviews? So hilarious. No, that is not me. That actually was shot over in the, uh, the Netherlands, I think. It's an American spacesuit because we're the only ones apparently that sell spacesuits. You can't buy like go out and buy a Chinese spacesuit. You know, they're all American. Talk about your propaganda. But no, that is not me. Uh, or, or maybe it is. Well, I don't know. I, I'm not going to take credit for it though. Sorry, guys. Uh, let's see here. Peanut Gallery is making some great comments, but I'm not going to read them. Let's see here. I got 90 seconds. Let's see here. Randy Randy writes, my name is Randy. <laughs> I'm one of your biggest fans. It was your Flat Earth Clues video that helped wake me up to the Flat Earth truth. As someone with a PhD in chemistry and a scientist all my life, it was humbling to realize how easily I had been duped all my life. Anyway, I'm an American currently living in Switzerland. I have a nine-month-old son, and unfortunately, there are limited TV channels in English, especially for kids. So a few weeks ago, we had CBeebies on the BBC's Kids Channel. There is a science show called Nina and the Neurons, where they answer some new questions each week with science experiments. Maybe you have already been sent this, but a few weeks ago the questions were, how do we know the Earth is round? I didn't have a way to record it, but found a link online. The quality is crap, or perhaps you can find a better one indeed. Again, you've probably already seen it, uh, but if not, enjoy. It's a riot. Keep up the great work and looking forward to your next video as always. Best regards, Randy. So yeah, guys, check that out. It's, uh, Nina and the Neurons. How do we know the Earth is round? Doctrinating the kids early. Coming back. Last chance to call in. Real people. Real radio. Initiating the truth frequency. Is Truth Frequency Radio. Welcome back to Strange World. No, Peanut Gallery, I'm not going to sing the words to Joe Jackson while the instrumental is playing. That would be cruelty, uh, cruel and unusual punishment. That's what that would be. So no. Uh, it, well, by the way, that was Joe Jackson stepping out from his album Night and Day. 
Uh, phone number to call in. This is your last chance to call in. Don't be nervous when you call in. Look, everybody else does great. You know I'm not going to yell at you. Not really. Look, I, seriously, I am not like so many other radio hosts out there would just tear into people. I, even if you're a troll, I'm not going to yell at you. Because remember, everyone that starts out in Flat Earth used to be a debunker. That's the t-shirt from DITRH, which is I became a Flat Earther because I tried to debunk it. Or debunk flat earth, however you want to read, read that. Anyway, phone number to call and last chance is 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111. Chris writes, hey, check out how planefinder.net updated their website. Looks like they are faking flights and putting globe pads on their digital planes now. It was never like this in July of 2015 or 16. This is a new update. We must be getting their attention. I told Patricia as well. Check out my screenshot. Weird. Absolutely agree. 616, area code. 616, you are on with Strange World. Last segment, last chance. Don't be nervous. Don't blow it. Who are you? Hi, I'm Joel from Michigan. Hey, Joel. What's going on? Nothing. I was uh, been listening to you for a while, and I heard you mention that you had been to the pyramids and uh, the Giza pyramids. I have. I have. I went several years ago because... I got a wild hair that uh, after I, I stared at him long enough, I said, you know what? I'm not going to know anything until I actually stand in front of him. And right. I went with the sole pers- purpose of standing in front of him. And uh, people the, – the, the, I, I, I know you get a point, but I want to mention real quick. The thing that people miss because photos are always taken out of perspective and things are never what they appear to be. The pyramids are literally – the backs of them are right up next to Cairo, downtown Cairo. And so people think these pyramids are out in the middle of the desert and you have to take camels out there to get them. No, 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 no. They built every – they built the city around the pyramids. It, it's just how they shoot the angles uh, that uh, they make it look like it, they're just out in the middle of nowhere. Anyway, go ahead. What's your point? My point is I'd like to present a different ser- scenario that most people don't probably ever think of. Sure. Hit me. That uh, the first five are early scientific experiments to uh, discover how the human eye works at objects at a distance. Okay. And I base my assumption on that by an obelisk, that it's a model of a uh, vanishing point perspective. Interesting. And the uh, sixth pyramid, or the Great Pyramid, is specifically built for the optical illusion that it presents, that if you stand close to that triangle, when it had the peak on it and the fascia was on it, it would present to you a tall rectangle because it's really eight-sided. It's slow uh, in the middle and off in all four. Right. I remember points. during during one of the equinoxes, you can you can see it from an aerial shot, which is really creepy. I've seen I've seen what you're talking about. Okay, so you understand the optical illusion that would be presented if you stood very close to it and looked up at it. What you will get is kind of the brain games things where it will present a tall rectangle that extends up into the sky. Interesting. I, no, no one has ever, you're right, no one has ever brought okay, that and up. And I to. was kind of surprised that nobody ever put the obelisk as a model of vanishing point perspective. That's the proof, that's what they discovered when they built the first five. Yeah. The nice. sixth one was specifically built for the optical illusion. I believe that to be the Tower of Babel. Huh. Uh, in, in other words, they could drag somebody up close to it, convince them that it's a tall rectangle going all the way up into the sky. You use the piezoelectric effect of all the, the stone to probably create a chemical reaction and maybe get white and black smoke like the Catholic Church huh. out of the things that are pointing to the, the stars. Because you've got to remember, what's an obelisk doing? It's pointing to objects at a distance. I, just, I mean, that's what it's doing. <laughs> yeah, that's good stuff. Hidden in plain sight perspectives. I like it. I kind of got kind of uh, waiting for something new to come out in flat earth, and it became apparent to me that the ball people don't have any argument. They got nothing, dude. No, no, they don't. All they can do is get mad. Agreed. And all they do is make themselves look bad. I also agree. <laughs> you know, I, I felt sorry for that guy last night. I think he ruined his radio program. Yeah. Oh, Zachary. Yeah. Zachary, yeah, Zachary Hubbard had, had a real problem. I mean, at least Chris Everhard just didn't um, 
uh, keep going with it. Uh, well, Zach, what I don't understand is, is why do these people that want to argue it, they don't even understand their own model? Uh, you know, don't. I, I can't be too hard on them because it all comes down to conditioning. If your conditioning has been, if you've been hit really, really hard, and the globe is is something you believe in wholeheartedly and have for years, it's tough for it's the somebody told me a listener recently. It's like I, I see the phone calls coming in. I swear I, I will get to you. We, we still got time. The um, hey, listen, I can. No, I no, no, no. Wonder- wait, wait, wait. One thing, and that is that is it's like somebody said it's like be growing up to be an adult and then finding out you were adopted. Somebody tells you you were adopted. It is such a shock to your system. Most people would not believe it. You know, most people they see. That's the weird thing with me is I did not have that experience. I kind of stumbled around all my life thinking that something was radically wrong. Sure. And when I, I mean, I was only five minutes into the first Eric Dubay video, and I mean, the light went off for me. I thought, aha, that explains why everybody works on circular arguments. Yeah. You know, if you ever try and, I was, I'm detail oriented. Yeah. So I have a tendency to look at things from, you know, a very narrow perspective and try and figure things out. Yep. Well, when you, I, subsequently, I ask a lot of questions. Well, I got run in so many circles trying to find answers to things that you would think people would know. Yep. Yeah, you'd you think, know? but there, again, there's a lot of assumptions made. I still love t- telling people, it's like, oh, yeah. I go, list me five movies, uh, mainstream movies about the moon. Right, and, right. you know, and they, they start, you can see their wheels start turning. I go, you don't have to even try because there are none. But they'll say, what? Well, but they, they want to see it. Same people that say, that think they see the curve when they go to the beach. It's not that they see the curve, they want to see the curve. They've been told the curve is there so many times, they want to see it. And so it's like, oh, yeah, I totally see it. It's like, no, you don't. I, I guess I was one of them little kids that was kind of, uh, how can I say this? I was skeptical from the get-go. Yeah. In other words, I just didn't see the world in the perspective that was presented to me. Yeah. My whole life, even when I was, I can remember going outside and being a little kid and playing by myself at a real young age and thinking, we're in a terrarium. Yeah. That's the way I've always viewed it. And when they told me that, I never let go of that terrarium thing, and I just learned not to say that out loud. Yeah. doesn't mean I, you know, totally let go of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah I guess that right. was the way I kept my sanity, because I felt like I was, uh, everything was very deceptive. Yep. And yep. All, the extra, all the experts could only refer me to an, another expert when I asked them a technical question. You know, yeah. I didn't Excellent. Find I, I, I wish there were more people like you. Unfortunately, you know, the. I was just a wild idea. I thought I'd run it by you and let the, the peanut gallery uh, chime in and see what people thought of that perspective. I, I You know what? That's, a, that's an interesting, interesting perspective. In fact, the peanut, the peanut I gallery. I'd throw, I'd throw it out there. The peanut, before you go, the peanut gallery actually has two quotes. Um, one was one believes things because one has been conditioned to believe them. That's from Aldous Huxley from Brave New World. Right. Uh, then the other one was, uh, since the earliest days of our youth, we have been conditioned to accept that the direction of the herd and authority anywhere is always right. And that is from uh, Susie Kassam from Rise Up and Salute the Sun, the writings of Susie Kassam. So. I, I got one that I, that I actually live by, and that is, I'd never join any organization that would have me as a member. Uh, I know that one. That's excellent. <laughs> excellent. <laughs> well, Listen, very well. I just wanted to throw that out there, and I'll let you go. And all right, thank for the year. All right, bye hey, now. you have a good you have a good evening. Okay, you too. Bye bye. Bye bye. Last chance for people to call in. I know you're twitching on the ring dialy thingy, whatever you guys call the phone, whatever it is. Uh, 720-897-6111. That phone number again is 720-897-6111. And the phone lines are only open for another 15 minutes. I don't know how many emails we're going to be get through. Some, most of these emails I'm going to have to save for the, um, the email show that I'll probably do with my careless secretary, who has not died, mind you. Uh, she is actually still here. Uh, say hi, by the way. Hello, yep. I'm here. Yep, she's here. She's watching the chat line, and it's pretty mellow in there. Uh, 912 area code, let's pick you up. You are on live with Strange World. Don't be nervous. Where are you from? But the pressure's on, so what's your first words? 
Hey, Mark, this is Seth. I emailed you before about the artworks for the television show. Yeah. So I don't want to talk about that for confidentiality reasons. Okay. I'm sure everyone wants to figure that <laughs> That's one probably out. probably good. <laughs> Where I wanted to call is chime in on what that other guy just called in about the perspective stuff. Yeah. Like physical constructions in the world and trying to figure that out. Yeah, like huge, um, huge objects I, that are presented for a visual, te- a visual test. Yeah. Yeah, just a quick alternate theory on chemtrails. Imagine chemtrails in a time lapse of a year going every which way, creating a grid lines in the sky. So if you had a camera doing all chemtrails, you would see the grid lines just like you would in a video game when you strip away the textures. Interesting. And that's really, you want to talk about synchronicity, that's really weird because the thumbnail for this show, and I already built it, is an interesting, you can look up the article where there's a, a flight out of Perth, I think Perth's in Australia, that, uh, that noticed some vertical line clouds. And, other, and people are saying, oh, those have got to be chemtrails. And they're the straightest line clouds I have ever seen, evenly spaced apart. It is, they, they look like, you know, I couldn't draw it with Photoshop and you know, I'm not very good with Photoshop, but, but that's interesting. You would bring that up. Yeah. And I think maybe like, just, let's just say that pe- people were actually trying to do that purposefully Yeah. to try to map the perspective of the sky. Maybe. And maybe people in the past have done it as well with obelisks or even with games or concepts. Like I think I talked to you before about backgammon how the board right 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 i remember now, now i remember you yep with dark and light circles on them traveling on the triangles yeah and it's like one of the oldest games there is and the reason why i thought of that game in my mind was i started looking at perspective stuff and i was like you know what this back end of the board looks like an attempt at a perspective map yeah yeah because when you when you're standing on the left or right of something like a hallway and you're looking down, the left wall is converging towards your right. But if a person's on a hallway on the other side, the right wall is converging towards their left, so it looks to be moving one way or the other when really it's only moving away from you in Z space. Yeah. On the Z axis away. Yeah. Some interesting stuff. So I like the it. motion. So, like, in, theoretically, you could be... I haven't really thought about this too much. I'm just throwing it out there for people to think about. Mm-hmm. If you're standing on the left side of the sun and it's going away from you, perspective is going to force it to appear to be moving to the center of your vision. So it would be moving right. And the person on the other side of the sun, it would be moving left, even though it's only moving away from you in Z. Hmm. Huh. Some good stuff. I like it. Just some thoughts. Just some yeah. thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Any, uh, any shout outs before I try to squeeze in a few more calls? Um, just, uh, my girlfriend who I converted to flat earth in less than five minutes with only two effect totems, one being magnets and two being the stars in a circle. Wow. You suck. I, they hate you for that. It's, it's tough to find. They were also the first two videos that I watched. I, I went back through my history and I was like, what, whatever got me on the flat earth. Cause like you're talking about autoplay and stuff. Yeah. Went back through my history and it was simulation theory consciousness as the ultimate reality then like the very next video was flat earth nice and i got to those consciousness videos through you know religious um uh, research and stuff huh you know like the nature of reality so it went straight from simulation consciousness idealism that's one thing that people might want to look into yeah um if they haven't done that yet, any flat earthers out there looking to idealism. Okay. Which is basically the whole world is an idea in the conscious mind. Yeah. Real, it's real, but it's, you know, it's consciousness is prime over matter, mind sure. over matter. Yep. Yep. I know exactly what you mean. All right, man. Well, cool. All right, that's it. All right. Well, hey, I hope to hear Thank from you, you maybe maybe next week and uh, we'll we'll go from there, okay? All right. We'll All right. Do. Take it Bye. easy. All right, man. Bye-bye. Uh, phone number to call in is 720-897-6111. I think I can squeeze a couple more in before the end. Let's do a, an email while we're waiting for the phone calls and to, uh, to roll. This one's from Philip. Um, 
As soon as I start the emails, the phone calls come in. 540 area code. 540. 540, where are you? And who are you? And don't be nervous. And make sure you turn down the radio in the background. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, what's up? This is Casey from Virginia. Hey, Virginia. What's, what's, what's happening? I just wanted to kind of piggyback on what the guy, the gentleman, two two calls ago was talking about, who was bringing up the perspective of the obelisk. Okay. Um, in that same in that same realm, not necessarily talking about perspective, but just I think I wonder how much problems that the world's been dealing with as far as disorders and uh, vertigo and things like this aren't just mental disorders, but maybe like a result of some kind of psychosis of dealing with the ball globe reality that we've been forced to Oh, interesting. So yeah, like vertigo and simple things where, because, well, you you probably, if you've listened to my stuff, you know that human beings are designed to fall for illusions. Uh, The the trick, which I love is, you know, anyone knows this, they've been driving in traffic. You're in stop and go traffic, you know, multiple lanes, cars to your left and right of you. All of a sudden, one of the cars moves forward and you're not sure if you are moving or they are moving and you freak out Absolutely. and you hit the brake really fast because you're like, oh, go away. what happened? Did I, you know, did I take my foot off the brake? And, yep. the, and what they did was they did some university study and I can't remember, I can't quote it right this second, where they put people in a fake car and they either move the car very slowly or they move the wall in front of them. And people could not tell what was moving, the wall or them. I mean, nobody could. And yeah. so, yeah, it's very possible that our perception is is ample. The distortion of our perception—that's a mouthful—is amplified by the <laughs> fact that we're we were told we're in a globe, but our mind wants to revert back to what we see. Reality, yeah, well, to real reality. Reality, yeah. <laughs> like like all the pilots that say that have told me, it's like, yeah, when we're up there, we only see flat. We see a flat for a horizon forever, but. We have a problem with that because we're told since we're children that it's a globe. So we just have to say, well, okay, it's a globe, but apparently I'm seen flat. As long as I land this sucker and nobody dies, Mm -hmm. then I I can't go any further than that. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I'm I'm sorry. I just had one other other thing. Sure, go ahead. ahead. I I think I heard you echoing it this morning when I was listening to one of your other shows. It must have been a a previous show since you're live now. But um, you had mentioned something about uh, you know, the magician never wants to give away its their their tricks. You know, the whole point is the whole reason that they spend so much time into their illusions isn't so that they can be debunked or found out, you know. Right. It's it's a deep, deep deception. So I mean that's what we're all wrapped up in. And I think they took an infinite plane and they wrapped it into a finite ball. And that's yep. part of the magic trick. Yep. Like I agree. Ball. I absolutely agree. Yep. That's that's a great that's a great way of looking at it. Well thank you so much. All right. Hey, you have a good rest of your night, okay? You too. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, guys. I'm going to take one more call, and then I swear I'm going to finish this this email from South Africa. Uh, hey, Mark. Good afternoon. I've been introduced to the Flat Earth model by a friend and have been watching YouTube and stumbled acro- upon your segments. Do you have any idea- data on shipping lanes for the Southern Hemisphere? The flight r- routes are a no-brainer, but shipping lanes. Look forward to your reply. Regards, Philip, from Gon- Gons by... South Africa, that's G-A-N-S-B-A-A-I. I probably butchered the pronunciation, but I'm sorry. I'm American. I'm allowed. So, uh, yeah, with the shipping lanes, there was all, there's always a problem. There's two problems with the shipping lanes. One is, because people ask, oh, you're going to track the shipping lanes. One, boats are so incredibly slow. Uh, watching paint dry or watching grass grow is actually more entertaining than watching boats in the southern hemisphere. They're, they're covering a huge distance. And it's just – it's awful to, to do. If anyone wants to track time-lapse ships in the southern hemisphere using whatever whatever tracking software is out there, be my guest and send it to me. But to date, I've never seen anyone that done it. Uh, and here's the, here's the call. The last call of the evening, I swear to God, is going to be 607 area code. 607, you're the last call of the night. Where are you from? Don't be nervous. And hey, no pressure, but this is fourth quarter. You're it. What's happening? Hey, what's going on? I'm uh, Matt from Central Central New York. Central New York. Yeah, fitting. All right. Yeah. What What's New York people don't get are actually nervous about calling in? Yeah. Well, um, no, I've been listening to your show for a couple weeks now. So um, uh, 
I just wanted to go off what that last guy was saying and um, how how I came up, you know, discovered the flat earth. Yeah. Uh, it was actually a kind of funny story because I was, it sounds like a lot of your callers, you know, go through the, uh, the conspiracy videos on YouTube. And, uh, well, <clears throat> I stumbled upon it and, um, you know, watched all your clues. Yeah. Sorry. Um, How you got, how you got into flat earth? Well, apparently he was killed. He probably wasn't killed. Uh, hopefully he'll call back. 607, I will take your call. If you call back, you, you, hopefully you didn't have a phone problem. Don't worry, I was, I was listening to you. The, um, uh, the guy from South Africa, the other thing I was going to answer about the boats, is there something that boats do that planes cannot do? And that is, if they're, if they're heading towards a port and the port isn't ready for them, the boats will just stop. So you could be tracking a boat for days and days and then all of a sudden that boat can't get into a port and so it'll just stop and it completely screws you up. You do that two or three times, I guarantee you, you will not be tracking boats anymore. Planes are way more convenient to work with. Oh, we got like four minutes to the end of the break. You know what? I will take another call. If 607 doesn't want to call back, and I'm sorry, I you know, hopefully um, he wasn't getting too emotional or uh, his phone didn't die or... Uh, the government didn't cut him off. That would that would be bad. Uh, I'm not going to answer that email because that's going to take too long. I'm looking for a small email here. Uh, yeah, here's one. Or maybe it's not. I can't tell. Uh, yeah. Sir, I would love to have your knowledge. I am not surprised by your videos and still less of the unknown. I am very open and I wonder if we could unite our resources to go and see that barrier. They cannot monitor the dome at first. But it is impossible for them. Too many kilometers. I so much want to see the barrier because for a long time, I think we are actually manipulated by our system. Please give me a response cordially. Um, Morel John Jacques. It's French. I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm not French. Uh, or is it John Jacques Morel? I don't know. Uh, let's see. Is there any more? Any more short emails? Here's one from Kevin. Hi, Mark. Great watching and reviewing all the evidence you presented. I haven't even considered an alternative to the globe concept. When watching, I kept thinking of the Red Bull Stratus jump. Oh, boy. See URL below. Unless this video is doctored in some way and Red Bull are also part of the deceit from the jumper's vantage point prior to making this leap, the Earth certainly looks curved. I would be very interested in gaining your perspective on this. You know what? I hadn't written back this guy and he wrote on the uh, 16th. But I will send him because I can get it pretty small. I'm going to send him the uh, a small copy of that 121,000 foot weather balloon where you know everything's nice and pretty and blue and flat, and hopefully he'll get an idea. Because if you really think, and that's why they that's why they took the picture like that. That's why the mainstream media latched onto the Red Bull story because they made it look like he was way way up there. That that he was up, the curvature was up so high. Even he was only supposedly up 120, 130 thousand feet, and the curvature would have been him thousands of miles high. No balloon would have been going up there. So so which is true? Either the Red Bull picture is true, or the 121,000 foot balloon pictures or video is true. They can't both be true. One is one is a lie. And if you're using a fisheye lens, otherwise known as the peephole lens, otherwise known as well whatever other names you have for it, then you, you, you know what I'm talking about. But I will email that guy back. Uh, let's see. Can I read any more emails before we go? We got like a, uh, I've only got like 90 seconds. Here's one. Hi, Mark. I understand you have traveled the world quite a bit. Can you give me a, a list of extraordinary places to visit, like the pyramids in Cairo, that huge tree stump in Colorado, et cetera? Uh, yeah, go definitely. First on your list, if you have the money, go to Cairo if they even let you. I was one of the last people to actually go there before that whole um, uh, Arabic Spring or whatever it was when the city started rioting. Uh, if you can get to Cairo, fantastic. Also, the uh, the pyramids in Mexico, great. The Bosnian pyramids, there's really not much to see because they're still underneath a bunch of tree covers. So you're not going to be able to see much there. Uh, if you are into scuba diving, the underwater city outside of Japan is really, really cool. Uh, and of course, yeah, if you're a fan of Close Encounters of the, the, the Third Kind, definitely go up to Wyoming and check out Devil's Tower. Uh, that's an American destination and you know you won't fight a lot of crowds. It's really cool, but Close Encounters is an older movie and I don't think that it's a bit. I went, went there. It's just a tiny reference. Anyway, guys, uh, Ten Commandments. I don't have memorized, but I do try to tell people, treat 
others better than you treat yourself. Thank you for everybody that was call, that have called in tonight. Uh, thank you very much for all the emails. I will do an email show tomorrow uh, with my careless but still lovable secretary. And uh, what else? Um, can't think of anything. I've got like 30 seconds left. I'm kind of stumped. Check out Rob Skiba's video. Check out Sunshine Peach's video and Daphne's video. Just just look at my the channels I subscribe to. I don't have that many. Uh, but you know what? Uh, we'll see you here next time. Same flat time, same flat channel.